Hey guys, I'm gonna talk about something a little bit different today. I'm gonna to talk about relationships from the Filipino perspective. Now, I'm gonna hammer the guys a bit and then I'll actually go over some of the positive stuff because I like to push it from all sides. Um, first thing is, a lot of guys out there aren't worth me dick. Um, an example of this, I got involved with a, somebody asked me to look at something and I, there was a girl in Cebu they were, was there with her family at the airport to meet this guy. He wasn't even on the flight. And somebody got in touch with me because I knew I was in the same town as the guy. Didn't take me long to find him. And I, <laughs> I found out, he, I mean, he was into ABBA, but that wasn't why I was laughing. It's just the fact is he was, he was a very, he's a sad, a sad little guy. Um, he's a carer for his girlfriend who's got, I think it's uh, muscle, is it muscular dystrophy, I think. Um, she's wheelchair bound, she's, she can't look after herself and that's what he does. He lives in her house, he's paid as her carer and that's pretty much him. Now that guy would never go to the Philippines, ever. A, financially couldn't afford it, but B, he would have a home to go back to when he returns. The home that she's in, I believe, is also part of the um, social housing. It's disabled, what do we call it? There's a word for it. Disabled adapted. And it's part of a complex in the sense that the front of the building is a um, care home for the elderly. And then you have these on the back walking distance from my parents house which is why it didn't take me long to track the guy down but it, it wasn't very difficult to in all honesty but here's a prime example of what's going on with some of the guys out there they are locked into situations that they will never leave in his case if he left he would lose his house lose his job and be out on his backside um but he has all day on the internet because that's what he's doing. He is hanging around on the internet looking at dating women on the Philippines and that's why I was laughing a little bit because I did see some of the personal stuff with these ABBA stuff and things and that's what made it very funny for me. Nothing wrong with ABBA but he seemed a bit excessive with it including the haircut but anyway. Um, so you got to be aware there's lots of things going on where guys have got for example a wife that's very ill looking after their elderly relatives or whatever there's a lot of guys that will never get to the Philippines or if they do you've got a long wait literally you're waiting till, till people pass away um, now a lot of those guys if they're open and honest with you then you're halfway there in actually understanding that They've told you the truth and being realistic, it could take three years. But it doesn't mean they're a bad person. It only means they're a bad person when, like the other one, the girl's actually sat there and completely distraught because her entire family have turned up at the airport with her to meet this guy. That A, wasn't coming, but B, finds out that he's living with a disabled woman that's his girlfriend and the guy's just a very sad individual. Um, so there's a couple of examples. Now the other ones, I would say is be careful of the ones that are just looking for images and video stuff. And if you get guys doing that, just ditch them. You don't even have to talk to them. The guys are doing it from the other side. When they get a woman asking for Western Union, my dog's sick, my kid's sick, my aunt's sick, um, I have no internet, I have no webcam, send me money. They ditch you just as fast. So just bear that in mind. There's nothing where you're saying, you know what, you're a pervert, and <laughs> just switching, the, switching off and get rid of them. Because they're going around the same way the Western Union and scammers are. They're hitting up hundreds of guys, and these women, these guys are hitting up hundreds of women because they, they might get a response, and maybe, I don't know, five, five out of a hundred, I don't know, no idea. But the point is, they're perverse, they're sad. They're sad in the sense that they're there to exploit the situation and women actually looking to meet other men, meet men, etc. and just using it for sexual gratification. 
those guys, I've always liked the plague. And I, in, if somebody wants to know my opinion on them, I think it's sad and disgusting. That's it. <laughs> um, so you've got that one. So you've got the guys that have situations that will stop them coming to the Philippines, at least for a period of time. You've also got guys that are having issues relating to relationships or there's other stuff going on that they're looking for an emotional pillar. Um, they ain't coming either. Or if they do, it'll be a very small percentage because what they're looking for is an ego boost. They may have a halfway through a divorce, for example, in the sense that they're not actually divorcing yet. <laughs> they're actually in that last phase of living in the same house, not talking to each other or throwing glasses at each other, whatever. Um, but talking to you on the phone or whatever, they're feeling something wanted and all this sort of stuff, and that stuff goes on. But at the same time, technically, they're, if they're in a relationship and doing that, the chance of them cheating are quite high. So even if they did uh, eventually break from the relationship they're currently in, in my personal opinion, I would say that the risk of them, like if something become a strain in your relationship, they're probably going to see somebody else. Um, or it got much, much harder, and we'll cover that later on anyway. So from that point of view, you've also got the risks from those types of guys. The next ones I would say to be aware of is the... The guys that are doing heavy dating, they're looking for like hundreds of women and flicking through them. Now, I tell people to actually, look, you know, isolate the people that they actually want to date and get an interest in and actually speak to multiple people. The thing with that is the relationship has not occurred yet. There is no exclusive, exclusive person to person yet, in the same way I'm sure many of the women on dating sites are not locked into one person, um, because there is no relationship yet. But at the same time, you may find that you'll talk to somebody for weeks and they've suddenly seen somebody else that's much prettier or something else, and they disappear. Um, these are short term issues in the sense that you'll probably come across this within a short period of time. Um, and that's, I suppose that's part and parcel of the online dating. You know, the fact is somebody else has just arrived. Um, but the, the thing is, don't lock yourself into an emotional relationship until you're actually in an emotional relationship. This is online dating. This is not a relationship until you've actually met. Which I suppose I could cover quite quickly in the sense of why is that important? Well, until you've actually met you haven't actually seen each other. Although you see each other on camera like this, and a lot of people actually say I look very different in person to what I do on camera. They're right, I'm not as fat as I look on, on camera. <laughs> I don't know if the lenses are around, I don't know. Um, but I, I look very different in person. Um, but but it, even from that point, that's very narrow in the sense of uh, the physical attraction side. But you've got the other sides of how compatible are you? Because when you're waiting for the guy to come online at 8 p.m. after he gets back from work and you chat for an hour, you've had all day to do your other stuff and then you're just chatting for one hour. When you're in the same house 24 seven, it's very different. The same as when people say, I don't mind if my wife can't cook or not. Yes, yes. Uh, I'd been there in the sense that my my ex didn't cook at all. Um, she she actually set fire to her hair a few times, and I'm not going to go. And somebody's already asked me about things related to my ex. I'll just leave it at that. I don't really dwell on that because I'm one of the people like past is past, and I'm I'm well past anything that happened in my past anyway. So it doesn't doesn't really bother me. Um, but the point being is, I would finish work, I would come home, and then I would cook cook the food. Now bear in mind, I work long hours. I work about 16 hours a day a lot of the time, or used to. And when I go home in the evenings, I'm a little bit tired, no surprise there, because um, I work in construction. 
um, and then having to cook. And then my ex would phone me about half past seven, eight o'clock in the night. I've come into a cold house, nobody's home. <laughs> Switch all the lights on, put the heating system on, cook dinner, and she's going, what are you eating? Because she's gone to her mother's because she doesn't like going to an empty house. So I've been there, and this is why I say things like cooking's important, because I don't mind cooking, I love cooking. But when you're actually busy doing other stuff and actually have having that thought of, uh, I'm looking forward to getting home to dinner, and the first thing is, is you see no lights on in the house, there's nobody home, and then you're going, okay, I wonder what's in the cupboards, because you would, you would have hoped somebody would have been there to prepare your food, so that at least you're um, in a better position for the evening, instead of coming home and spending an hour cooking, and you know, with the cooking prep and everything else. And before anybody says, well, you know, why should she have to go? She worked part-time. <laughs> that's simple as that. I think she only had worked eight hours a week. So, that's why. Um, but anyway, so those little things can become a problem over time. The same with, if there's issues with a guy, it's worth talking about it fr up front. Communication is king. Um, getting uh, everything out in the open. Um, the other thing is, we'll go on to going to the West next. I think I've covered some of the, issues, the main issues that I, I see that guys get up to. Um, but going to the West is not an easy thing to do. Um, a lot of women assume they're going to get the big house, the car and everything else because the dollar or the euro is bigger than the peso. And I sit there, even to this day, I've sat and had these conversations, but they're going, but it's, it's more. I'm like, so is my cost of living. <laughs> <laughs> if you have an apple that is one euro on an apple that is five pesos yeah but that's more yes it costs more but <laughs> everything's relative it's cool but you get into these conversations it just goes around in circles people either get it or don't that's why a lot of even EF uh, OFWs overseas Filipino workers don't even discuss this stuff with family they normally discuss it with me because they get into the same thing um, but anyway yeah so a lot of the lives you're expecting will not be realistic a lot of the guys do not have major financial abilities I mean I've got to admit myself um, it's the lifestyle I choose because if I went, if we moved to the UK, which we can very easily, I mean, with with the status we have anyway with Spain, I can actually just hop on a plane with the family, move them to the UK, and actually uh, settle there already. Uh, even with the EU issues, because quite simply, my income's high enough anyway when I'm, when I'm doing what I do corporate wise. But I got tired of the corporate stuff. Um, but our lifestyle's pretty good anyway. We have a swimming pool, we have a tennis court, four bedroom house, new car, which I'm not getting into it right now. <laughs> still still had some uh, issues with that this week again. Um, but the point is, we have a fairly okay lifestyle. A lot of the rat race stuff that goes on in the West gets overlooked. And I see this from, I, Many guys in the US, to be honest, um, the UK not so much. Cause I think it's it's not it's not a niggling thing like somebody's better than others. Or it's just the way things are different. Um, I find in, for example, uh, US side, a lot of guys complain that their wives are sending their money back home, even though they're working. In the UK, I find a lot of the women I speak to and their husbands that both people have to work anyway but they recognize it and they notice that they're working to pay bills in the UK and they, they get into the you know this is why we get onto these conversations relating to uh, the the money because they're saying well oh, you earn big you know the family's like yeah you earn big money and it's like I said but I have bills <laughs> you know just going to work I have a car because we don't live anywhere near so I, I need a car, I need to fuel it, I need to pay the tax insurance, but your salary is bigger. And it's like, the connection to expenses don't exist. So you will get that from family as well, that's another thing to recognize is you will get into these same things. 
One of the other peculiar ones I did come across as well is OFWs treat um, women that are married, because I, mean, I don't know about that many men that are married to Westerners from the Philippines, it's nearly all women. Um, but OFWs treat themselves as if they're something special um, and that they're, they're not true Filipinas overseas because they're, they're married to a foreigner. Um, these little groups and the crab mentality stuff exist big time. My brother-in-law in Macau has experienced it with Filipinos there as well. Um, they look down on people actually working overseas because they're they are spending money, yet they're working overseas and stopped off in Hong Kong and Macau, and somehow they're different. <laughs> but yeah, crab mentality is alive and kicking. The other side of that is watch for the older women, the 40 pluses that are divorced because um, they often try to stir the pot. Um, it's all, what car have you got? What house have you got? What does your husband do for a living? Do you know you're entitled to half of the house? Do you know you're entitled to half of his wages? Do you know that this blah, blah, blah? And they, you know, they're planning a divorce. And one of the things I do stress, and I do tell people directly before they go overseas, is cover this stuff big time. Go over it, talk about it. And the, you know the funny thing is, is because if you make the, the woman aware, and I'll say this from the women as well, get aware of this stuff because these people will try and destroy your relationship. Um, when it happens, you can see the stuff I'm already talking about. And that's what I found with the women that brought it up with me and said they just laughed because it's everything I'd actually discussed. Um, these women have divorced their husbands and as such, a bit like this, well, we're different because we're this uh, type of OFW or whatever. Um, they are trying to justify being different in the same way that if, you're, if your marriage is destroyed, it means that because they destroyed their own marriage, it makes everybody the same. It's better that way. Um, the other thing is getting from A to B and the distances in a relationship can have a adverse effect on many people. First thing is if your partner comes to the Philippines and has limited budget, they're not going to be able to come regularly. Do not assume they love you any less or anything else. And I did watch a video earlier where a guy said, well, if a guy doesn't come back for nine months, then uh, the, the then he's cheating on you. It's like garbage. Absolute garbage. Um, reality is a lot of people financially need to save money. Um, I know people that have been booked their first trips on credit cards and stuff. Something I say, do not do ever. Um, but this is why I've ordered some new lock picks and stuff. I'm going to teach people how to make some extra money on the side. Um, I call these things money money from nothing. And I did get a comment from somebody a while back saying, you know, that doesn't make any sense. YouTube is money for nothing. YouTube, my channel's on YouTube, but I'm not allowed to discuss it. It's part of their Google um, information. But I could fund three to four trips a year to the Philippines out of my YouTube channels easily. Leave it at that. Um, Developing the website stuff. My website stuff allows me about a thousand dollars a month um, without having to do anything. Although I'm about to revamp some of the sites. Um, that's just guaranteed regular payments without doing a stitch. Um, the point being is you can make the trip happen. And I'm not telling the woman to put stress on you. But what I am saying is that if the guy is serious, kick him up the backside to do something about it. Um, and as I've mentioned, you've got these other issues that go on. Some people have got the family issues, some are never going to come to the Philippines because they're just looking for a, an emotional support or therapy. Um, but a lot of guys have a lot of bills, you know, especially if they've got an ex-wife and kids to support but it doesn't mean they'll never get there 
And that's why I say there is opportunities to make money online. There are, that will continue because the whole, I mean, like my arena, consultant arena, is actually growing. It's not reducing. Um, but moving aside, you, you need to be realistic, and they need to be realistic. Set a line in the sand and say, how are we going to make this happen? If they're serious about it, they need to get serious. In the same way, they may not be able to do it with their full-time daytime job, which is why, like when I was with the Integral Services, when I was pottering around uh, doing maintenance for Matland and Sainsbury's, I used to do locksmithing at night. I earned more doing locksmithing than I did on my day job. Uh, but the point being, it starts recognizing if you want to get on in life, you need to move mountains sometimes and you may you may need to st instead of sitting watching your favorite movies or bowling every tuesday or whatever you may need to study you're never too old to study you're never too old to learn you may find it slower and harder to learn when you're older but you'll still get it in the end you just need to keep going at it um and that's one bit of advice i would say you can make it happen going to the Philippines is not that expensive and if it's your first trip it's important that you do it once you get that first trip out of the way and you get that boost that actually says this is what I want then that should help you do the other bits that are much much harder which is studying <laughs> um, but anyway moving past that once you get through that, maybe you get married or whatever, moving to the West is not an easy move. Um, immigration is becoming a bit of a hotbed everywhere because it's a nice way to move the oil and water of politics away from realities and focus on blaming immigration for everything. Um, the US is doing it, Europe's doing it, UK is very, very active on it. Um, I mean, the UK issue is actually an open border policy that was begun under Blair's years, um, and they've been trying to shut the door ever since. At the same time, um, even if you went through the Schengen route, where a lot of people have actually come through Europe first, settled in Europe as a EU citizen, you're allowed to settle in Europe and then your non-EU becomes protected under your rights because you have more EU rights than you have UK rights because the UK the UK targeted the only group they could target for reducing immigration which is either foreigners or foreigners with EU partners uh, sorry foreigners with British passports and um, British citizens are actually targeted because the easiest numbers to drop so it's not going to be an easy transition. You're not going to be married by Thursday and on a plane by Tuesday. Um, it can take a long time. Like a friend of mine, it took a year. He, he waited for his wife uh, in the Philippines for her paperwork to go through before he traveled back with her. But at the same time, even myself, uh, moving to Europe took me, took me months to actually push it through. Uh, dealing with the embassies and stuff, but I can actually move to the UK tomorrow if I wanted to. It's just I do not want to move to the UK, and that's one of the things I do stress a lot. Because you can't afford to live in, in <laughs> you can't afford to live in the UK. You can't afford that's why we went to Spain. Spain cost me more money, um, but we're actually where we want to be. I I like Europe. I like the fact that when we can hop in the car, I can go over to France, Italy. Uh, Portugal, um, Gibraltar, all within driving distance and very easily travel in and out of the country. That's why I like it. I like the lifestyle, let's put it that way. And I am hoping my wife will sway to let me buy a small, small holding here, um, a little bit further away from the coast, but I wouldn't mind a little farm. Um, but that'll be a project once I make some money on the crypto that will justify it later. Um, but anyway. So you could have long periods of time apart. And my longest me my, I've been apart from my wife is actually a year. Um, there has been times where we've been apart for four or five months at a time. And one of the things I do want to emphasize is the listeners guy earlier was saying, oh, you know, 
not serious, if, you know, if somebody doesn't come for nine months or whatever. A lot of guys, it's normal. <laughs> They're single because of the work they do. Guys in the oil field, guys in the gas field, guys that do international consultancy, guys that are deep sea diving. There's a lot of people out there that have these rolling schedules. And like myself, mine's contract to contract. So a contract could be three months, it could be six months, it could be 12 months. But they commit you to that contract. When I was doing uh, RBS Bank, for example, I had to be in Scotland because I'm running Gogoburn. Gogoburn's the global HQ. Although the, the actual address of the HQ is actually in St. Andrews, um, in Edinburgh, which is why it's quite funny whether they're actually protesting in the wrong place. But anyway, um, you've got to understand that you can have long times apart. Jealousy can be an issue. Um, feeling alone and disconnected can be an issue. But at the same time, the guys are going through the same experience. The guys ain't partying it up. The guys are predominantly from pretty much, I'd say about 80%, let's be fair here, are looking for long-term relationships with a person that they will commit to them as much as they want to commit to them. To them. Um, so that the relationship is actually on a solid footing that the commitment is to each other and they will do what it takes to make it happen. And that predominantly I find that is where most of the guys are. Financially, a lot of them may not be capable. Um, a lot of guys do struggle because of, like I said, ex, ex partners and things like that. But this is also part and parcel of why they want a partner that will bring something to the table as well. Um, so even if it's something as trivial, trivial as cooking or um, taking care of the house, a lot of that sort of stuff allows somebody to focus on other things as well and that's part and parcel of it is actually having some stability that allows clearer focus on other things but also for, for at least eight people I know it's about purpose so their partner becomes their purpose in life because there's a lack of there's a lack of need these days in the West a lot of people will go through life without actually doing anything. For example, if you wanted to be an alcoholic in the UK, you could lie around in the streets, eventually a social worker or whatever will take you under their wing, sort you out of the house, sort you out unemployment benefit. And as long as you turn up to AA, you'll get free alcohol and you will also get an increase on your benefits. Um, the point is, people can carry you through life, but it doesn't mean you um, are doing anything, it just means you're existing. And this is why the importance of purpose exists. And it's why I'm not a fan of things like minimum wage, because minimum wage has reduced a lot of what would be classed as mundane or trivial jobs. But at the same time, they removed a lot of people's purposes, because that may be the only job they're fit for, maybe the only job they are capable of doing. But it gives them purpose. It gives them a reason to get up in the morning and something to say that, I look after myself. I pay my own way through life. Um, so purpose is also a very important thing. And it's these sort of reasons that many of these guys are good to marry. The ones I would say be very careful of, and I don't know what the percentages are, are the ones that have some conditions that are um, concerning. Um, mental disorders and things like that. I come across them from time to time, and I mean, there's there's one guy. Um, his girlfriend's now left him, but but he he was getting up in the middle of the night and stuff, and he had he'd had some experiences out out in uh, in Afghanistan that. He he couldn't look after himself. He he he'd become very unstable. And I'll be honest, when he moved to the Philippines, he shouldn't have gone to the Philippines. 
Now this isn't a case of the the guy is just suffering from depression or whatever. This this guy is actually quite dangerous, um, and as such, she she couldn't sleep or anything because she's constantly wondering what he's going to do next. Um, you do come across some of these guys now and again. Now don't get me wrong, some of the guys suffering with some of the stuff that comes out of conflicts, be aware of it and guys should be more open about this stuff, they shouldn't actually keep it hidden. I mean I've had some people with bipolar conditions as well which um, also a similar thing because the mood swings and everything create more, more problems. But why? Why moving to the Philippines, people have, think this will affect them in a positive way, I have no idea, because there's no sort of safety net there. But with the women they're meeting shouldn't become their carers. Um, it's not fair on the women. So I will say that as well, you know, if you're a woman looking for a guy, be aware of these things. And if things don't seem right, ask them get any information communicate um, guys are also more open in the sense if you actually ask them a question they're very likely to respond to it I do find a lot of women from the Philippines you have to prize information sometimes um, but ultimately there is a lot of good people out there from both sides and this is why I focused today on the bad and the good sides of relationships from the for the um, from the Filipina side uh, to say I recognize it both sides I recognize the Western Union scammers and all that sort of stuff as well but the guy side there is similar stuff going on in different ways and I do think it's important if you are doing online dating as a guy or a girl is to recognize both because you may actually wonder why somebody seems to be guarded or whatever <laughs> you're in the same arena at the end of the day, the, there is people feeling a bit uh, concerned from both sides because of the things that go on in the backgrounds. You know, I said weird guys, Western Union scammer women, and as such, people can be a little bit more guarded than you would expect. But anyway, thanks for watching.